Mr. M presents Divisibility Rules 5 and 10. Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a really quick look at some simple mental math that you can use to find the factors of the numbers you're looking at. Basically, you're looking to see if your number is divisible by certain other numbers. So let's take a look at the numbers 5 and 10. 5 and 10 have a pretty simple rule. If a number ends with a 0, like 30 does, it's always divisible by both 5 and by 10. If a number ends with a 5, like in 45 over here, the number is divisible by 5, but it is not divisible by 10. Now, I can tell you that. Let's actually test and see if we can figure out why that's true. If you think about all the numbers you know that end with 0, let's go with the simple ones like 10 and 20 and 30. All of those numbers, if you think about it, clearly divide by 10 because they're factors of 10. They're skip counting by 10. 10, 20, 30. That's what you're doing. So clearly they divide by 10s, but if you actually just think about your basic multiplication, they all also divide by 5 because two sets of 5 is 10. So for example, 10 divided by 5 equals 2. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. 30 divided by 5 equals 6. No matter what number you have with a 0 at the end, it's always going to divide by 5, even if that number is really huge, which we'll look at next. On the other hand, when you look at numbers that end with a 5, like, for example, 45, 15, 25, those numbers are always able to be divided into sets of 5. That makes sense, because if there's a 5 on the end of the number in the 1's column, it means that that number divides easily by 5. But if you look at these numbers, what you'll notice is none of these numbers, and look at the easiest ones, like 15 and 25, they don't divide into sets of 10. 10 plus 10 is 20, plus another 10 is 30. They do not divide by 25. That's basically a simple rule that you can follow. Now, that means that if I look at the number 30... I'm going to be able to divide that number into groups of 5 or groups of 10. But if I look at the number 45, I'm only going to be able to divide it into groups of 5. Let's take a look at some really big numbers here. Over here, I have 15,561,230. But the only number I need to look at to see if it's going to be divisible by 5 or 10 is whatever number is in the 1's column. In this case, it's a 0. And that automatically tells me that I can divide it by 10 and I can divide it by 5. It doesn't tell me what the answer is. It just lets me know that I can go ahead and not to waste my time trying when I'm not going to get a whole number for an answer. Same thing over here. 457,775 I need to look only at the number in the 1's column in this case. It's a 5. That means that I can divide the number by 5. I can't divide the number by 10. No point in trying to divide it evenly by 10, but I can divide it evenly by 5's. Now let's say I have a school population of 565. I know that I want to buy pencils for every student, and the pencils come in either packs of 5 or packs of 10. Which one am I going to choose if I want to make sure that I don't overbuy, but that I have exactly enough for the school? Well, if I want to be really exact, I'm going to choose packs of five, because I know that 565 is not divisible by 10. 